welcome back to the Nomad360 channel and great to have you guys back for another video. Today, we will be looking at the world of vintage cycles. The hobby of watch collecting is already a very niche topic. However, collecting vintage watches by this Japanese brand is even more so. Despite being a relatively small group, collectors in this sub-niche are one of the most active and enthusiastic ones out there, with a rapid growing community. That is because vintage cycles provide tremendous value and quality. In this video, we will be sharing with you a few milestones and models which spurred the collectability of these watches. In 1959, Seiko was divided into two main factories, Suwa Seiko and Daini Seiko, to promote competitiveness and innovation between the two. Suwa came to produce the first Grand Seiko in 1960, which met chronometer standards and was rated and branded. On the other hand, Daini, with the first King Seiko, only managed to meet the chronometer rating in 1964. But now, in the eyes of collectors and experts, there was never really a winner, with both factories producing high-quality Seikos, which is why they remain extremely collectible even amongst modern offerings. The story of Seiko Chronograph began in 1969, with the production of the 6139 movement, and later, the 6138. At that time, the appeal these chronographs have would be their value, as they were some of the cheapest automatic column wheels chronograph in that era. Chronograph's models contained the 6139 movement included the famous Polk of the Speed Timer line, which was named after astronaut Colonel William Polk for the 1973 Skylab 4 mission along with the Omega Speedmaster. The 6138, a two-register chronograph which followed the release of the 6139. Two iconic models possessing this movement includes the UFO, also known as the Yachtman, as well as the Bullhead. These models were nicknamed after what their case resembles, with the USO resembling a flying saucer and the bull head including a unique set of pushers on the top of the case resembling the horns of a bull. In watchmaking, the 1970s brought about the quartz crisis, a major disruption in the industry for which low-cost but highly accurate watches took away the appeal of traditional watchmaking, putting many Swiss brands out of business. At the helm of the revolution was Seiko. This brand from the Far East introduced the Seiko Quartz Astron. This watch which democratized accurate but affordable watches by introducing the Quartz movement. Since then, mechanical watchmaking was never seen as an end or be all part of owning a watch. In the late 70s, Seiko introduced the Twin Quartz, which as the name suggests, consists of two quartz crystal per watch. This design stemmed from the previous quartz model being inaccurate from temperature changes. The solution of employing two different crystals with different temperature in a single movement placed this line at one of the forefronts of vintage quartz watches to collect. The allure of vintage Seiko watches doesn't stop here. But these models represent why aficionados collect these fascinating time capsules of the past. If you would like to read on more about Seiko's history, check out our article post at our Nomad360 blog. Link is in the description below. Thank you for staying with us to the end. Press the like button below if you enjoyed watching and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you guys on the next one.